Ellis. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you guys so much for taking my call. Thanks for calling. How's it going? Pretty good. So I have a question that I was wondering if you guys are able to help me. Um, so I'm currently trying to figure out what exactly would be the best option for me, at least in my situation. Um, my former job, I had a 401k that I was contributing to, um, as well as with an employer match, and I'm no longer at that job. So since I'm no longer at that job, I was having a conversation with a coworker at my new job, and they were saying that since I no longer work there, I'm eligible to take that money out of that 401k. Um, so I was wondering if that would be a good idea for me to do to help pay off my debt. You're, I just, who told you this and why? And do you trust them financially? Because I wouldn't. Um, not necessarily trust them, but they do have like a lot more years of experience on me. So and they said that. you can just take money from this 401k and do what you want with it? Um, well, they said that it's possible I could take it out. I know that it would be taxed if I did take it out just because I'm no longer at that job. Yeah, not only are you going to have to pay your income taxes on that, there's also going to be an early withdrawal penalty of 10%. Right. So not only is that a very expensive way to get money, you're also robbing the future growth of that money in retirement. Okay. So, so this is a terrible idea. Yeah, bottom line, okay. wouldn't do that. So let's look at other ideas that are better. So you have some debt you're looking to pay off, correct? Yes. How much? Yes. Um, roughly around 43000 Okay, what kind of debt is it? Um, 2000 is about in a car loan. I have a thousand and some change in a personal loan, um, around 8,000 credit cards and the rest are my student loans. Okay. And what's your income? Um, I take home, I get paid weekly. So probably monthly I take home maybe about like 1400 is my take home. Okay. And what are you doing for work? Um, I work for like an IT staffing company. IT staffing. Okay. And what is the current timeline for you to pay this debt down if you just used your income? Um, if I just used my income, probably in 2025, like early 2025, late 2024. Really? Yes. What did you, you said your income is $1,400 a week? Uh, um, or what's yeah. your annual income? Like. Well, every two weeks, but annually I'm projected to make, um, not including bonuses, probably around like 45. Okay, that's where the math isn't adding up for me as to how you'd pay this off in under two years. Uh, I'm not sure. That's just what the calculator said when I put in the numbers. Okay. I do have a um, side business as well, so I do get a little bit of um, income off of that. So sometimes like, I sell things online and then I have my own like. I make candles, so I have a candle business on the side as well. Awesome. So if we ramped both of those things up, how much more could you add to your yearly income? You went um, really hard doing that. I would say probably if I worked really, really hard, especially with the candles, because there's a lot of money to be made there, um, I said I could probably add at least maybe this year alone, maybe at least five to 10000 Awesome. And are you investing with your new employer? Um, not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. So I would encourage you to pause all investing and just focus on this debt and make that your one priority. How much money do you have in the bank? Okay. Um, I do have my $1,000 emergency fund. I do have maybe about $500 extra because I'm also planning on moving out of the state. Okay. Moving out of the states? Yes. Where well, to? Out of the Florida. Moving out of Florida. Oh, moving out of Florida. I'm moving to Maryland. Okay. Mm -hmm. and is, is that for that... a job? Um, yes, for a job. I currently stay with family, so I can't really like stay here forever. And he has kids, so I kind of need to think of my next step. So you're going to have to find a new job? Um, my job is in Maryland, so I was more than likely going to see if I could just transfer. Okay, awesome. And do you want to move to Maryland? Um, I do want to move out of Florida, okay. but like Maryland just seemed like a nice alternative. I would just make sure, like, as you think through that move... Um, cost of living in Maryland may be quite a bit more than Florida. So I would just run some numbers on that because you may want to wait a year or two until this debt is tackled. Um, granted, if you do want to move, especially if it's a raise, then that could be good. But just also make sure to factor in those extra things because you said with family, you got to move out. But, you know, perhaps you could find somewhere in Florida on your own for the time being. 
But I will say, I, I it's hard, George, because I've been getting this question quite a bit recently with the 401k um, option. A lot of people are getting tempted to pull it out. And it, it is tempting because, you know, with your income, you see that debt and it's like, man, I could have this debt wiped out quick. It looks like a shortcut. It looks like a shortcut. But but in the long run, especially when you factor in all the growth you would lose, it, it does not pay off. It, it, I know it's not fun thinking through, you know, paying this off and it taking two years. But in the long run, this will ROI so much more. So, Ellis, here's the math on this. You have 43000 in debt. And let's say you're going to pay this off in two years or less. That means you need to throw $1,800 total at the debt. And you can do this using the debt snowball method, which is smallest to largest, regardless of interest rate, attack the smallest one with everything you can throw at it, pay minimum payments on the rest. And so if you do that and you start bringing in more income by selling stuff online, flipping stuff, any money you can scrounge up from the side hustles or selling stuff you have laying around the house, uh, obviously getting a raise, maybe even switching jobs, that is going to help you do this faster. And then you can get to the uh, fully funded emergency fund of three to six months. That is your next goal once we have the debt paid off. And you may want to sit down with a smart investor pro because you do have the 401k and you've left jobs. They can do a rollover for you and figure out how to invest that in the meantime. Yeah. Is this a traditional 401k or is it a Roth? Uh, It should be a traditional 401k. Okay. So what you want to do is a direct rollover to a traditional IRA. That way there are no penalties. Mm -hmm. You never see the money. It just goes straight into another retirement account. And then you have options to invest way more than you would have in your 401k. Okay. How does that sit with you? Um, that sits well. Like, I did want to know just because, like, I knew that if I took it out, there would be, like, a lot of penalties. They were nice enough to at least explain to me all the penalties that I would have to pay. Um, so the guy was like, yeah, do you want to do it now? I was just like, um, let me call you back and I'll let me talk to some professionals. So who's, who's the guy? You. Like, he's able to do this for you? I'm confused. Was it your employer? No, he was just a coworker. He was just a coworker that was just talking. Oh, okay. All right. Well, hey, I'm going to gift yeah. you one year of Financial Peace University and every dollar to walk you through this process. The videos are going to be super motivating. Watch all nine lessons. Start that every dollar budget. Connect it to your bank account. Start tracking the transactions. You're going to start to feel the steam and it's going to get addictive. You're going to go, okay, wait, we put a thousand on the debt this month. How do we put twelve hundred the next month and fifteen hundred the next month? That's fun. That's fun. All right. Well, stay on the line. Austin will get you set up. And I just love that she heard that from the coworker. It sounds tempting, right? It sounds like, ooh, like I can have my debt wiped out. But then she had that gut check and went, you know what? I'm going to talk to somebody else about Mm. this. Because I think right now that we're in such a culture where, you know, there's TikTok people everywhere. There's everybody reading financial articles. There's so many things where it's easy for a lot of people to feel feel like they know a thing or two about money. And it's like, the more I've listened and talked to some people, it's like the advice almost seems right, but then you're like, wait a minute. Well, it always sounds good at face value because it, right. it feels like a shortcut. The problem with shortcuts is it doesn't lead anywhere worth going to because you end up further into debt or staying in debt longer. And so we're seeing a lot of this right now, Christina, people turning to HELOCs, they're turning to home equity loans, they're turning to 401k loans, 401k early withdrawals. These are all terrible options because we're not actually fixing the behavior that got us here. All we're doing is trying to pull it under the rug and go, and it's gone, but it's not because now we've created new problems for ourselves. Right. And it's stealing from the future. When you get in some of those savings calculators and you see what you're losing in compound growth, it's like, man, that's just, it's not worth it. But it is so easy when your problem is right in front of your face and you're like, I've got this debt and I want it gone. It's easy to want to take a shortcut. And it's like, we want you to keep that anger and that feeling of like, I want this gone immediately, but do it the right way. Yeah, if you feel like that's your only option, you don't have enough options. 